internet friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lexi and today I will be sharing with you my fall TBR. So as you can tell, I am really in the fall spirit right now. I have decorated my room a ridiculous amount for fall. I love fall. I know a lot of people say that like, Technically, you shouldn't start celebrating it until the actual fall date, which is September 23rd, but it takes all of my willpower just to wait until the 1st of September. So in this house, it is fall now. I'm drinking a really, really good tea, by the way. It's, um, it's like green tea, but it also has like peach in it. It's so good. It's so good. Mm. So I'm actually doing two different TBR type things in the fall months. I'm doing like my general TBR for all of the months of fall. So September, October, and November today. And then I'll be doing like a more spooky one in October because when October hits, that's when things get real spooky in my life. <laughs> but just like for books, not in, not in other things because I'm actually a scaredy cat, so. Okay, the way I've like divided this up I have five books in each category, so I have five middle grade books to talk to you about, five YA books, and then five adult books that I'm really excited about as well. So without further ado, let's get started and get to all the books. Okay, the first book is a book that I, I think I put on my TBR last year and I did not get to it and I'm so upset. So this is top priority and it is the Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making, and this is by Catherine M. Valente. So this is super cute. It's actually about a girl named September, and I've that's always made me want to read this book in September. So this is a typical chosen one trope type of a book, which is my jam. That's like one of my favorite tropes of all time. It's about a little girl named September and she flies away to fairyland. She makes friends with a dragon and she has like all sorts of different adventures in fairyland and it just sounds really, really cute. So I can't wait. So the next two books that I have here are a set technically and I'm so, so, so excited about it. The first book is City of Ghosts and the second is Tunnel of Bones, both by Victoria Schwab. And I am so excited. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually love a good ghost story. The few, <laughs> count them very few, like scary movies that I do like or that I have kind of enjoyed usually involve a ghost story because I love I love haunted houses, I love ghosts, I love all that stuff. Like, maybe not in real life, I don't really wanna be haunted, but I just think they're interesting to like watch and things, I don't know. It's really fun. Okay, so I don't know anything about this book because I haven't read this one yet, so I'm not gonna talk about this guy. But this is about a girl who can see ghosts after a near-death experience. And actually her best friend is a ghost. And ironically, her parents both kind of like delve into haunted places and they get their own paranormal reality television show. So this actually takes place in Edinburgh and her family is kind of going through all of the haunted places, not knowing that her daughter can see all of these ghosts. It sounds really creepy. It sounds really cool. Apparently Cass gets involved in some really spooky stuff over in Scotland and it's got everything I want. It's got a really kick butt protagonist, it's got ghosts, and it's got Edinburgh. This is like my perfect book and I can't wait. <laughs> Next we have Evangeline of the Bayou and this is by Jan Eldridge. So this is really cool too because this actually takes place in the south and I love spooky gothic southern stories. So this is about a girl named Evangeline and Evangeline lives with her mother in the bayou. She does monster hunting, she banishes banshees, and she's learning how to be a witch, but she can't consider herself a witch until her familiar shows up. Then at the last minute, her grandmother is actually called to New Orleans to help solve some very random mysterious case and a bunch of things happen when they go there. It sounds really cool. And also what I love about this is they're called in here Haunt Huntresses. I'm really, I'm really digging the creative vibes in this. It just sounds really awesome and I can't wait. I love reading about like magic in the South. It's one of my favorite things in the entire world. I'm biased for this because I live in the South. So naturally I'm probably going to be more drawn to stories set in the South, but yeah. I can't wait. Okay, and then the last one is Be Gone, The Raggedy Witches. So this particular book takes place in Ireland, if I'm not mistaken, and it's about this little girl who is a witch and her father is actually kidnapped by the queen, I think of the forest, 
who also happens to be a witch, is this right? Let me see here, yes. So her father has been kidnapped by a queen who has outlawed magic and happens to be this little girl's grandmother. That's it for all of the middle grades. Let's move on to YA. So I've got two Libba Bray books that I really wanna to get to in the next three months. Of course, Libba Bray kind of goes with the fall. The first one actually is going to be a reread for me and it's A Great and Terrible Beauty. This is one of my favorite series of all time. There are three books, it's a trilogy if I'm not mistaken. And it was literally my favorite series when I was 17 years old, 17, 18 years old I think. It had come out somewhat recently, I don't actually remember, but I just, I loved the series so much. Like I loved this series with all of my heart. And I remember being really scared when I was reading it because Libba Bray has lots of atmosphere and she's not afraid to get dark, which I love. And so I remember being like really freaked out while I was reading this series, but I remember like not being able to put it down. And actually I named my dog Gemma after the main character in the series, Gemma Doyle. This trilogy is all about a girl named Gemma Doyle who is actually living in India when her mother is killed. And so she is sent to a private boarding school in England and it's like Victorian ages of England. So it's very like posh and like stuffy and there's lots of like creepy crawly things in the shadows. The boarding school that she goes to has some weird secret that Gemma kind of discovers and she makes friends and they kind of discover some magic going on. I don't wanna spoil it and I don't exactly remember like how much is a spoiler so I'll kind of leave it at that. But if you are interested in friendship dynamics, in great storytelling, in great atmosphere, in something that's gonna feel perfectly spooky for the fall but still not too spooky, this is my recommendation. I love this so much. I'm hoping that it lives up to the way I remember reading it, but I just remember loving it so much and I'm so excited to reread this. The next one I have by Libba Bray is The Layer of Dreams and this is a diviner's novel. So I won't read what this is about because this is the second in a series, but the first one, The Diviners, is great. It's like a timepiece. Libba Bray is so great with writing timepieces. Like, Oh my gosh, she nails the atmosphere so much. So The Diviners is set in the 1920s and it's set in New York and a girl named Evie is sent off to live with her uncle who runs an occult shop because her family does not know what to do with her anymore. And her uncle does not believe in magic. However, Evie does have some power. So she's not like a witch or anything like that, but she is psychic. She can touch an object and she can see like the memories of the person associated with that object, but like in very vivid detail. And sometimes it's hard for her to like shake herself out of that. And the whole thing is like a paranormal murder mystery but it is so dark. It is, I would classify it as YA horror. Personally, I wouldn't even say it was a thriller. Of course, take that with a grain of salt because I am the biggest scaredy cat of my life. And reading that book was one of the hardest things ever because it was one of those things where the writing was brilliant. And so like, I could not put the book down, but my God, was I terrified. <laughs> I was so scared. And uh, that's kind of one of the reasons why I've been putting this off for a while because I know that this is going to terrify me, but I'm kind of in the mood to be a little scared. Not really, like not in real life, okay? But like, you know, it's, it's Halloween, it's spooky. Give me all the spooky. Okay, the next book has been on several of my TBRs and I've talked about it quite a bit. Uh, and that is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. This was a buddy read with Kaylin and Allie. Kaylin finished it and she loved it. I think Allie's in the middle of reading it. So I'm the lagger because I haven't started, but no one is surprised. So anyways, this is about three queens who are triplets and they all have to kill each other because only one of them can be like the true queen of this kingdom. So it's very, very dark. Each one masters a different I guess skill or magic. One of them is well versed in poison. Okay, so one of them is called a naturalist. And then another one is a fierce elemental able to spark hungry flames or vicious storms at the snap of her fingers. Well, you know what? Kind of sounds like she has an unfair advantage because that power is cool. I love things like this in the fall because I love reading fantasy kind of all year long really, but I really get into it in the fall. I get into historical fiction more in winter 
fantasy more in fall and then contemporary in summer and spring is like a free-for-all <laughs> So I'm really, really, really excited about this. I can't wait. It sounds dark and eerie and creepy and yes. The next one isn't particularly like all about the fall. I just really want to read it and it's called The Bone Gap and this is by Laura Ruby. This was the Prince Honor winner, I believe, right here and it's gotten so many awesome reviews and it's been really, really hyped up so I really want to read this. This book is not really fantasy. It's magical realism, which is my favorite thing to read in the entire world. I like it even more than fantasy and I don't really know a lot about this book except the fact that this takes place in a place Place where there are gaps and you can fall very easily into a gap and then end up in another world and as soon as I heard that I actually didn't want to hear anything else because it sounded so good that I just I want to go into the whole thing as blind as possible and just be really surprised so that's all I know I know that it's magical realism there are portals to other worlds and that there are gaps that people fall through and I was sold. And then the very last book that I have here is The Wise and the Wicked, and this is by Rebecca Potos. So this book is about a girl named Ruby, and Ruby comes from a long descendant of witches who came from Russia to America. The one thing that they all have in common is that every single one of them has a premonition of how they will die. Fate always seems kind of inevitable in this family until Ruby's great aunt, I believe, dies a different way than her vision. And suddenly all of the other women in this family feel like they have hope to change their destinies and to change the way they die. And so I think that this is all um, about magic and, you know, are things inevitable? It's the question of fate versus free will. And it just, it sounds really great. It's been getting a lot of reviews and people actually are saying that this is more reminiscent of magical realism than of fantasy. So I can't wait because the combination of the two is also one of my favorite things. For example, Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno is one of my all-time favorite books and it does a great job of being a fantasy but feeling more like magical realism. So I have high expectations for this book and I can't wait. Yes. <laughs> Okay, and now we are on to the adult books. Okay, so so I'll start with the three that I don't have in front of me right now. The first is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This comes out October 8th, maybe? I know it comes out sometime in October and it's like early October and I can't wait for this book. This book is all about a girl who goes to Yale and there is an occult that I think she joins. I don't really know a ton more about that, but I know that it's been getting really hyped up from all of my friends. Anybody who has received an ARC actually is loving it. I know that the trigger warnings list for this book are also like huge and I don't wanna like miss anything. I don't know all of them on the top of my head, but I've also heard that it's just like one of the best books. It sounds creepy, it sounds fall, it sounds perfect. Next are two books that come out September 10th. The first one is Gideon the Ninth. And then the second one is The 10,000 Doors of January. So I don't know a ton about Gideon the Ninth, but I've heard amazing things from so many people on BookTube who have read it. And I have one sentence that I think sums up a lot of the plot, but also doesn't give anything that gives me anything that tells me what it's about. So I'm gonna read that. Okay, so this is what it says on Amazon. It says, lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. That sounds really cool and super unique. So obviously I'm gonna read it. And then The 10,000 Doors of January is about a girl who finds lots and lots of different worlds in a book. So she can access different worlds and different portals to places that are all in this book that she finds in a palace. That sounds like it could be my favorite book of all time and I have such high hopes and I'm trying really hard not to get too excited for it, but as soon as I get it, I'm dropping every single thing and I'm just reading that book and I, I'm so excited. The next book that I have on this TBR is A Darker Shade of Magic by Victoria Schwab or V.E. Schwab and 
I am so mad at myself that I have not read this series yet because everybody talks about it and I've had this book for forever. So this is a huge priority for me. I don't know a ton about it, believe it or not, because everybody talks about it, except for the fact that there are different Londons and that there is one person who can turn their coat and apparently access different Londons, although I don't know if it's through his coat or not. And it's just about, I think something happens where maybe he steals something from a different London that he's not supposed to take, and then all of a sudden people are like hunting him and chasing him down or something. If that is wrong at all, I'm really sorry, but I think that's what this is about. But yeah, it's just a fantasy adult novel. Sounds really great. I love books that have to do with parallel dimensions and things like that, so. I can't wait. And then the final book is the book that I freaked out the most about when I got it, and that is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. I'm so excited! Look at how pretty it is. Look at how pretty it is. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I don't know why people think that the US covers are not pretty. You know, I'm like a very harsh critic with covers in general. I think this is like so beautiful and so badass and I'm so excited. So this is the final wrap up of Jay Kristoff's amazing trilogy about a girl named Mia Corvair. If you have not read Nevernight or if you have not read God's Grave, I highly recommend it. It's not gonna be for everyone. They are very intense books and Jay Kristoff has a very unique writing style. So I've heard that you're either gonna love it or hate it. I loved it. I loved every single book I gave five stars. Like, well, there's only two, but I gave both of the books five out of five stars. It's interesting too because if you read Nevernight and you find that you're not vibing with it a little bit, I've heard that from a lot of people, my recommendation is that unless there's like a very specific warning like you're being triggered by a lot of stuff because there's a lot of graphic violence and things that are happening in it, but unless that's the reason you push through because the ending of that book blew my mind and then God's Grave specifically blew my mind, unlike any other book. I mean, I was so, <laughs> I was so invested in God's Grave when I read it. And that book left me on the biggest cliffhanger and book hangover of my life. And I just, I haven't been this excited to read a book since like the last Harry Potter book came out. And I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this. I feel like I'm gonna love it. I'm so excited to read it. Oh my gosh. Oh, and then I, I can't tell you what this is about, but Nevernight is about a girl named Mia Corvair whose family was murdered and she decides to seek revenge by going to this badass assassin school to learn how to take down the killers of her family. And it's just kind of her journey through learning how to kill people, going to this badass Hogwarts and just kind of like, we're learning so much backstory on Mia Corvair and there's so many plot twists and subplots and things that you don't see coming. The romance in the first book is really awesome. The romance in the second book is really awesome. I just, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> Well, that is it, you guys. That is my fall TBR. So these are the books that I'm gonna be focusing on for the next three months. I will have another kind of spookier list coming out in another month, but yeah, these are the ones that I'm going to be reaching for first. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much, and I hope that you have the most perfect, cozy, and spooky fall ever. Until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book and I will talk to you later. Bye.